Depending on how different the electronegativity is of the bonded atoms will determine whether the bond is a polar covalent bond or a nonpolar covalent bond. You see, sometimes electrons are shared evenly. If they're shared evenly, which means a very low difference in electronegativity between 0 and 0.4, that means the electrons are shared so evenly that both share the electrons roughly the same. For example, hydrogen bonded to hydrogen. They both have electronegativities of 2.1. So any electron that's shared is going to be shared evenly. One for you and one for me, and 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 one for you. Nobody's got a charge because the electron is being shared evenly between the two hydrogens. On the other hand, polar covalent bonds are uneven sharing. You know how it is if you got a younger brother or sister and you can torture them. Mom says, make sure you share that. And of course, you take the toy for like five minutes. You let them play with the toy for like a minute. And they're like, Mom, he's not sharing. I'm sharing. Well, that's what polar covalent bonds are like. They're kind of greedy covalent bonds. Where one atom has more electronegativity than the other so that the difference is greater than 0.4. For example, if we've got hydrogen bonded to chlorine, hydrogen has an electronegativity of 2.1, but chlorine's is 3.2. What that means is that any electron that's shared is going to be more attracted to chlorine than to hydrogen. Let's see, the difference here is 0.9. Now remember, the difference has to be at least 1.7 for chlorine to be able to completely remove hydrogen's electron. For example, if we had NaCl, Na has an electronegativity of 0.9, chlorine's is 3.2, which is a difference of 2.3. What that means is that sodium's valence electron is going to get pulled away from chlorine, and it's never, ever going to go back to sodium. Chlorine is negative, sodium is positive. But in the case of HCl, chlorine doesn't have enough excess pull to completely remove hydrogen's valence electron. What it's going to do, though, is once for me, once for you, twice for me, once for you, a whole bunch of times for me, once for you, more times for me, once for you. Oh, yeah, I'm getting the electron more than you. Don't you dare tell mom. Because chlorine has the electron for more time than the hydrogen does, chlorine builds up a slightly negative charge. Now, this isn't the same as an ion charge. Remember, in an ion charge, the chlorine gets the electron forever and for always. Here, chlorine just gets a little bit of excess unfair usage. So chlorine develops what's called a partially negative charge. Partially. This is the lowercase Greek delta. You're familiar with the uppercase Greek delta. This means change, like delta T means change in temperature. A lowercase delta means partial. You can see how these two Greek letters transferred into our letters. This became our capital D, and this became our lowercase d. The Greek letters kind of morphed over time into the alphabet that we're familiar with today. Because the hydrogen has less use of that electron, it's going to develop a partially positive charge. And because there are oppositely charged ends, this molecule is referred to as polar covalent. Covalent, because they're still sharing valence electrons. Polar, because they're not sharing them equally. One atom has the advantage over the other. But again, not enough to become ionic. If you need to find electronegativities of atoms, you just have to look it up on reference table S under the electronegativity column. Hydrogen has an electronegativity of 2.1, and so does that hydrogen. That makes this an END of zero, electronegativity difference of zero. Hydrogen is 2.1, carbon is 2.6. The difference between them is 0.5. Nitrogen is 3.0. The other nitrogen is also 3.0. There's no difference. Hydrogen is 2.1. Chlorine is 3.2. That's a difference of 1.1. Did I say 0.9 before? Somebody hit me over the head with a paddle! If the electronegativity difference is between 0 and 0.4, it's nonpolar. 
If the electronegativity difference is above 0.4, it's polar. Hydrogen is 2.1, oxygen is 3.5. That's a difference of 1.4. Now we're getting close to ionic territory here, but we're not quite there. This is still a covalent bond. But because the difference is greater than 0.4, this is a polar covalent bond. Phosphorus has an, elect Phosphorus has an electronegativity of 2.2. Chlorine, as we said before, is 3.2. That's a difference of 1.0. That's, again, a polar covalent bond. Which of these two molecules would be more polar? Well, whichever one has a greater difference in electronegativity. So this one would be more polar, and this one would be less polar. The degree of polarity is going to help you understand why some molecules stick together better than others, and that's something we're going to take a look at in our next section.